Our yeah. next guest says this attack was not just economic terrorism carried out to dupe Colonial Pipeline out of $4 million, but also economic terrorism carried out against many mid-Atlantic states. Virginia Petroleum and Convenience Marketers Association President and CEO Michael O'Connor uh, joining me now. What makes you think this was about more than just the 4 or $5 million that the hackers got? Well, we haven't had this kind of situation occur in Virginia since 1979. And you really had to look in the eyes of people who were waiting in line who were really fearful that they would not be able to continue with their daily activities to go to work, to, to go to the store, to bring the kids to school. And uh, for, for two days, people's lives were really severely disrupted for the first time in a generation. Now, the, the hackers themselves, uh, of course, we don't know exactly who's behind them. Uh, whether they're affiliated with a government or not, the government of Russia, but they sent out a note, uh, I think it was on Monday, either Monday or Tuesday, uh, saying that they had no connection with any government. Now, nobody had asked them that question, and it, it, it made me think when somebody answers a question that hasn't been asked, usually they have the opposite meaning. In other words, I'm wondering if, in fact, they really were operating uh, at behest or direction of the, the Russian government. What do you think? Well, well, you really have to look at that because while this was cyber terrorism, the end result was really, in fact, inflicted upon the people of the states that were impacted, particularly here in Virginia. And as I just mentioned before, we haven't seen that in, in decades. So uh, the fact that there is some vulnerability, whether it be uh, cyber or whether it be physical to this pipeline, is obviously very key to the economy of our state and to the businesses that I represent. And I, I don't want to encourage any sort of mischief out there, but at the same time, something that would affect billions of dollars worth of commerce, when you think of all the people that were affected by this, a three or four million dollar ransom, I mean, it just, it just seems like there was something much more than that ransom involved in what the hackers were doing. Right. Well, ordinarily, when, when a, you have a disruption like this, it's weather related, whether it be uh, a cold weather event or a hurricane or something like that. And you have a bunch of time to get ready to fill up the stations, to fill up the transports, to fill up the bulk plants. And in this case, this occurred in the uh, really the blink of an eye last Friday. So there wasn't that opportunity. And we also had demand has been down about 10 percent because of COVID. We weren't in the middle of the summer driving season. So it was a vulnerable period last Friday yeah. when this thing occurred. How much has this changed the supply lines? I mean, it's not, we've, we say it's, it's, it's focused, and it is just focused on the East Coast right now, but you know, what happens on one of our coasts eventually ripples down throughout America. Is it, has it affected or will it affect supply lines throughout the nation? Well, many parts of the country can get their petroleum supplies through ports. We do not have that option here in Virginia. So I would say that uh, perhaps we're more vulnerable than some other states, than others that, that do have that waterborne option. And what about switching from pipeline delivery to the truck and train delivery? For one thing, it's, it's more dangerous, I understand. Uh, but for another thing, is it, is it conceivable that they can fill in the gaps or is, is, are we gonna have these backlogs for weeks to come? Well, you know, we're a very resilient industry, and, and we had members as early as Tuesday going to Alabama and Ohio, sending their own trucks there in lieu of the pipeline and filling their stations and customer stations. So it, it's always an all-hands-on-deck effort when you have something like this, and hopefully it's not going to be uh, occurring anytime soon, reoccurring anytime soon. we we, we got to jump, but I just have to ask a final question. This does kind of play into the hands sure. of the people who are really anti-carbon energy of any kind, particularly uh, ones who are against gasoline because they, they favor electric cars rather than gas cars. Do you see any kind of... Uh, uh, lack of concern or uh, maybe even glee on the part of some uh, environmentalists who are saying, good, this will push people away from gas cars? Well, I think we have to remember those people with the Teslas and how those Teslas are being charged overnight and where that energy is coming from. In large part, Great it's point. coming from fossil fuels. 
Act, uh, that's a terrific point, Michael, and, and it's something that hasn't really been thought out in depth by a lot of the people demanding the end of fossil fuels. Uh, Michael O'Connor, great that to see great. you. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it.